Ah, so 1.5 is cost benefit analysis, which is just the next step in this whole marginal analysis concept that you're going to use over and over throughout the course. So, hypothetical situation. You are wanting to go visit your friend for a week. Uh, you're trying to consider which flights to take. Um, you also have a job for which you earn $100 a day every time you go to work. So you got three flights you can choose from. You can leave Thursday night to go see your friend for $275. You can leave Friday morning to go see your friend for $300. Or you can leave Friday night for $325. Which flight do you choose and why? Uh, Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. Um, why? Because so I don't have to take off from work. work. The whole day and then you go to there. Yeah. So you make the $100, whereas going Thursday night, you would give up $100 of work day. Exactly. So that's considering the opportunity cost. So we've talked a little bit about trade-offs and opportunity costs. We know working with the PPCs and then comparative advantage opportunity cost is what you give up when you make a choice. So if you were to leave Thursday night or Friday morning, which means you cannot go to work on Friday, you are knowingly giving up that extra $100. So really, Thursday night is going to cost you $375. Friday morning is going to cost you 400 because of that hundred dollars of opportunity cost that you lost. It's a foregone cost that you gave up. And Friday night, it's not going to cost you anything. Well, I mean, it's going to cost you 225, but not yeah. any extra. And really, you can almost look at Friday night as costing 225 because you made an extra hundred dollars by going to work that day. So this is the economic way of thinking. This is considering that opportunity cost of what you gave up when you make a decision. So trade-offs are all of the thousands of things you could have done other than the choice that you made. Opportunity cost is always two things. You got choice A, choice B. That way we can put a quantitative measure on it and determine, hey, when I went with choice A, here's specifically what I gave up in B, or if I went with B, here's what I specifically gave up in A. And so thousands of things, two things, we can actually calculate opportunity cost. And that's what you are doing with comparative advantage is calculating that opportunity cost and figuring out who is the most efficient producer of each good. Right. Explicit and implicit cost is just another way to phrase it. Explicit costs are your actual out-of-pocket, real-world monetary costs. So this is what we normally <coughs> associate with cost in the real world. When you go and buy a product, you are paying the explicit cost, the monetary cost. Implicit cost is the opportunity cost. And so this is the one we don't usually consider when we make a decision. We do inherently, but it's just kind of, you don't sit down and say, okay, what are my explicit costs plus what are my implicit costs? It's just something that you just naturally consider. And that's what we get into with this is this cost benefit analysis that you constantly do over and over and over. You just never realize that you're doing it. So assume you're at a sporting event, you are going to the concession stand or you know, going to buy your child father's nachos or what have you at a sporting event. And so what we have is a downward sloping marginal benefit curve. Remember, anytime you see the word marginal, you're going to add one and look for the change. In this case, you are adding one more of whatever you're buying. If it's pizza, whether it's nachos, it doesn't matter. The whole concept is, is that as you continue to buy more of the product. The additional benefit that you gain from it is going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. Meaning the first one you buy, you're going to get a lot of benefit or what we call happiness, satisfaction, utility becomes the big word we use later on. But that first one, you get a lot of it. As you continue to buy, you know, if you buy six orders of nachos, well by that sixth order, you're probably not getting near as much benefit as you did out of the first one, assuming you're eating all of them. So you have a downward sloping marginal benefit because we can see, and this is kind of the perceived benefit, that almost you would be willing to pay $10 for the first one, you would be willing to pay $9 for the second one. And so we can see over time that benefit is going to go down as you consume more of that item. All right, you have a marginal cost curve. Remember, marginal, add one, look for the change. Now we're looking at the increasing cost every time that you buy one more pizza, nachos, whatever. And so, you know, as it increases, that cost is going to go up. So yes, the monetary cost is going to go up because you're having to pay for it. But 
the longer you spend in the line at the concession stand, the more of the sporting event you're going to miss, and that's also a cost. You know, that's something you're giving up by making that decision. And so the longer you stand in line, the more of the game you miss, plus the more money you're going to have to spend to get those items. If we put them together, we've got this point right here where the two lines cross. This is what we will eventually call a point of equilibrium. It's a balance in a market. When we get to supply and demand, equilibrium becomes a very big concept because that's where the market is going to self-regulate itself back to a state of balance. But anyways, for a cost-benefit analysis, just to kind of understand these marginal changes, you know, this is our ideal point. You know, at this point, that is the last unit we know of where the benefit is still greater than the cost. Anything past that, anything units 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if you compare, if you go straight up where it intersects these curves, we can see the cost is greater than the benefit. At that point, it's not worth it anymore. So in human nature, when we make decisions, and you've probably already done this hundreds of times this morning, you're going to do something over and over and over. You're going to repeat that action as long as the benefit is greater than the cost, meaning you're getting more out of it than what it costs you. If at any point the cost becomes greater than the benefit, you're going to stop. And so if it says, you know, how many pieces of pizza would this person buy or nachos or whatever, it's going to be five. Because up until this point, they're getting more benefit out of it. But past that point, it's not worth it anymore. So this is that marginal analysis. We're going to add one and look for the change. In this case, we're looking for the changes in benefit and cost. What is giving them that benefit? Um, like if, if it's the same cost for a slice of pizza... Just the enjoyment of pizza. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because at some point, you know, eating does give us happiness if we're hungry. So, but know. then after that, you're stuck. Yeah. And there's, you know, they would rather go sit down and watch the game. Because oh. at that point, you know, once they get here, 6 through 10, it's not worth it anymore. So, at three units, you've got a greater benefit than cost. So, yes, it's worth it. If you go over here, the cost is greater than the benefit, it's not worth it. Too much. So, you're looking for that point where naturally we're trying to find where is marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. Later on, when we get to <coughs> production cost and talking about revenue, which is money that businesses get to keep, there's a concept that we'll refer to as MR equals MC. Marginal revenue, marginal revenue equal to marginal cost is probably one of the top two or three biggest concepts moving forward once we kind of get into the real thick of everything. And so just kind of know this way of thinking that we're trying to find the last point for which the benefit is still greater than the cost. If anything past that, it's not going to happen anymore. And so if this is a business, you know, they're going to continue to produce as long as they're making money. At any point that the cost becomes greater, they're not going to produce anymore. Questions on this?